Perfect. Yeah, thanks everyone. I see a lot of people joining. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, so yeah, one thing, if you're, if you're just signing in, I, we just asked everyone to put, um, if you had any inspiring books, podcasts, YouTube videos, movies, anything you recommend for entrepreneurs and you find yourself recommending a lot, feel free to throw it in the chat. Um, we'll compile it all and send it out um, as a follow-up to this too. We'll keep a running list as we go. Perfect. Excellent. Some good options there. Rainforest. Rainforest is a good one. I don't think I, I haven't read most Masters of Scale, so we'll have to check that out. Rainforest, two votes. Yeah. Rainforest always gets a lot of votes, so. Ooh, messenger. Excellent. All right. I think with that said, I'm going to share my screen and Paul, I'll kick it over to you. Sure. Um, hey, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to have you. Um, this is, uh, um, it's an exciting time and, and I'll give a little background. So I'm the CEO of the Florida High Tech Corridor. There are a number of corridor folks on here and we have others throughout the state, which is great. Um, uh, a little history on, on this particular grant and I'll talk about it here. The first, my first step will be to, to in about five minutes or less, explain the corridor uh, and, and kind of why we're here. So go ahead and, and flip to the next, uh, next slide, Jack. So we've, we're on our 26th year. Uh, I was blessed enough to leave the Navy uh, three years ago and, and come down and get picked to lead the organization for uh, for the next, I don't know, one or two years or maybe 10. It all depends, uh, but I love it. And, it. and it really was created, as, as the slide talks about, anchored in our three research universities across the I-4 corridor. So 23 counties uh, and what we do I like to describe it, we're, we're ecosystem builders, as a lot of you are, as you support. Um, we do it at a regional level. Um, so I'm a, we're, this team that's on here is always thinking about, okay, how are those 23 counties connected? What are we doing? Um, how does this work? And, and part of what we did, and I'll describe it here in a second, is being able to leverage the power of the region. Go ahead and go to the next slide, Jack. So this is how we do it. Um, and it really is part of a regional set of what you all are, are, are ecosystem builders. We've got economic groups out there. We've got K through 12. We've got our three anchor research universities. We've got within the corridor, 14 state colleges. Um, we've got folks like Emory Riddle and Florida Poly uh, in, in here as well. We've got you know tons of entrepreneurs uh, and inventors, the, the heart and soul of what we do. Uh, and then that investor and, and resource piece as well. And part of part of what FL Fast is about is is going after resources for entrepreneurs. And you'll see that uh, here comes. So that that's a whole reason why we're we're here. Go ahead and go to the next slide, Jack. So what do we do? It you know it it took a while. We we um, we've zeroed in on what I think is the the niche for the corridor. Part of it is it a lot of it centers on what we like to describe as community driven innovation. Tech for tech's sake doesn't mean a hill of beans if you're not really helping communities. So as you hear from Jack and others on what FL Fast is and what the Fast um, grant that partnership uh, does for us, it really is a lot of about communities and the innovation that as we walk with them, um, what happens as, as innovation takes hold? And, and Jack will show you some interesting data. Boundary breaking collaboration, we can collaborate all day. If we collaborate in our stovepipes, then oh well, that's sort of old news. So let's reach out to other organizations. That's what I love about this call. I love about the SBA call, if you're on that, is you get to reach out to these really, I, I think I'll be I know I'll be on a listening and learning journey in the state of Florida, learning about different organizations uh, for the next decade. Um, and, and it really is driving that 
for, for what we at the corridor do is driving that boundary breaking, boundary spanning, a who, who might want to get connected and what magic could result from that. Catalytic investments, this is, this is part of FL Fast. It's the idea of for, for 25 years, the corridor, we're fun, we're not a membership organization. We're funded through the state, through, through two of our three universities, through USF and UCF. Um, and what we're doing now is saying, you know what? Those resources, we're blessed to have them. And now what can we do to catalyze and really kick off a lot of neat things kind of across the corridor? And then the final thing is the radical inclusivity. We are constantly asking ourselves who's not at the table, who should be at the table, who doesn't even see themselves in the table on the at the table, but they need to. That's a that's a very important piece. I'll, I'll give you an example. So one of the things that and part of my 2022, I my wife and I live here in the Orlando Center. Um, part of what I'm doing in 2022 is getting out outside not only the 23 counties, but also um, you know, on the edges of that, but also the rest of Florida. And uh, so Sunday night, Kat and I went to the presentations from a startup weekend uh, and had some fascinating teams that had formed with ideas that were solving real problems. And, and that you, as you watch these teams, they are coming from all over. And that's, I think, the power of Florida is honestly, nobody's from here. Everybody's from somewhere else with a different story. And that's what I think is, is great about this. And that's growing that techscape. Go ahead and go to the next one, Jack. So why, why FL Fast? Why Florida? If you would have looked at that map for 2022 and, and, and previous, Florida would be grayed out. Florida has never done this before. And, and part of the challenge, I think, that, that we see is groups like you are part of this group um, going after resources that, I'll be honest, Florida deserves. Um, so as we think about what, and, and SBA wants to help us. So we put in for this from, the, from, the, from a regional perspective to support SBI, our STTR, and Jack will talk about, about that particular thing. And, and I think it goes beyond that. But it really is to serve our entrepreneurs. Um, all of you, if, if you're an entrepreneur, you're the one we're focused on. If you're a supporting organization, that's why we get up in the morning um, to be able to, to support them. And for us in the corridor, we are hyper-focused on that, on that third bullet. Hey, minority-led, veteran-led, women-led, those that are that should be at, at the table that quite frankly bring tons of creativity that aren't that, that aren't there this is this is why we're doing it and it really helps the SBA then uh, as well and so, so be able to sort of look at Florida and say okay there is a lot of a lot of neat stuff going on here um, Jack will talk about some of the some of the stats you know, third most populous state, tons of businesses, and yet on the uptake side of SBIRs, we're in the bottom third. And that that is something that has hung with us as a state for a long time. This is a chance. This is yet another chance to be able to say, you know what, we we can serve our entrepreneurs in, in this world and be able to uh, be able to help them. Uh, go ahead and go to the next one, Jack. So um, there are some corridor members on here, and and so we ha we haven't rehearsed this on who goes next. We'll, we'll popcorn this around a little bit. So let me go to Amy. Amy, introduce yourself uh, from the corridor, and then then hit it to somebody else. Hi there. Good afternoon, Dr. Amy Beard, a program director here at the Florida High Tech Corridor, and I'm part of the team that that helped bring this um, to Florida. Excited to connect with everybody today. Um, let's see, I will popcorn it over to Jennifer. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer McKinley. I am at UCF and I'm a program director for the Matching Grants Research Program, uh, which provides incentives for industry academic research projects. Oh, I'm supposed to popcorn it. Uh, Ian. Hi, I'm Ian. 
I am part of the high tech corridor, specifically with Synfluence as a cluster manager, and I'm here to provide support and see where we can go. Um, Kim. Good afternoon, Kim Stangle, uh, COO of the Florida High Tech Corridor, here to support uh, you and my colleagues in any way that I can. Uh, Elizabeth, you're up. Hey there, Elizabeth Nelson. So I um, am Jen's counterpart over here at USF in Tampa. So helping companies tap into the matching grants research um, program and um, all the other research and innovation opportunities here at USF. Uh, is Jack, our fearless leader, the last to go? Jack? Most uh, one, yeah, thanks. Elizabeth, and so, yeah, I'm Jack. I work, I'm a senior cluster manager with the Synfluence Initiative, and now working with FL Fast here for the corridor. So, um, thought it was important to do, put up, have, help everyone put a face to the name. You might have, if you worked with the corridor, you might have worked with one or two of us, but you see, kind of get a, um, be introduced to a lot of the team here, and you'll hear from a lot of us over the course of the next few months. So, let me get us back on the shared screen here. So, um, so we noticed when, just wanted to kind of set the stage a little bit, I'll talk about what we're going to be doing with FAST um, specifically here in the next couple of slides. But um, notice as people were RSVPing for this call, you know, we asked how familiar are you with SBIR and as expected and as we hope, there's going to be a pretty wide range of, of people that have had a lot of experience and some that might be new to this world. So just to kind of set the stage a little bit on what SBIRs are um, and we'll link to a lot of other materials if this is something that you Think would be interesting for you or your entrepreneurs but um in a nutshell it's 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 funding from 11 different federal agencies of the government um and there's about four billion dollars roughly a year in funding for high risk early stage research and development that is only that can only go towards uh for small companies so universities can only participate for example if they're a sub award to a to a company so this is one of the largest non-dilutive funding sources for um, high risk R&D for small businesses um, in the U.S. And so the, they're set up as grants and contracts and the whole goal is to get new technologies commercialized and into the market um, using non-dilutive funding. So you don't, companies don't have to pay back SBIRs that doesn't take any equity in the companies that, that go after them. And so, um, and so part of the goal of the SBIR program and of, and what we want to do is get more, um, get this funding into the hands of more entrepreneurs and get more resources to this group here to support entrepreneurs to kind of go after this funding and be able to recognize opportunities. So um, like I said, we can share more resources about that and we'll have a follow up with more on this um, after the call. But um, so in terms of FL Fast specifically, um, there's really two kind of two arms of what we'll be doing. One is services and programs specifically for entrepreneurs. Um, and so those will um, give you a sense of what those will look like as they take shape, uh, mostly starting in 2023, starting in January and, and there beyond. So we'll have in-person and virtual workshops for entrepreneurs throughout the state. So programs are eligible, or entrepreneurs throughout the state of Florida, not just in the quarter are eligible. Um, these will be some um, virtual workshops, some in-person workshops. They might be based around a single topic, such as, you know, how do you design um, an impactful commercialization plan? might be an example of one of a single topic focused training, um, but we're also gonna have in the first year two cohort, two agency specific cohort training. So that might, what that'll look like is um, we might um, take applications and, and take in, let's say eight entrepreneurs that wanna apply for an NSF SBIR, for instance, and we'll put them through a multi-step kind of, you know, multi-week process of how do you identify the right topic, design the, uh, design the proposal, and kind of walk, work through all those elements of, you know, kind of the, the should I go for it? How do I identify a topic and kind of moving on? So we'll, we'll have two, we'll do that for two separate agencies. So we're in the process of figuring out and selecting what that process will look like and what those agencies will be. So, um, um, but that those will be starting in 2023 um, and kind of the areas of support, um, not just around the trainings, but we'll be able to do things like uh, helping companies do topic searching, um, think through the kind of budget considerations um, for some proposal reviews, support letters, um, helping identify research partnerships, maybe through GRP or if there's other programs, initiatives, other folks we should know throughout the state. Um, proposal templates for each agency is different. There's a different template, a different strategy, different structure. So how can we help 
give some of these resources for the entrepreneurs directly and then help get those tools out, out to this group as well so you can utilize them um, in your own communities too. And so the link here, and again, every link you see here, we'll, we'll share either in the chat, we'll also send as a follow-up um, to the call here, but that's the main corridor page that links to, um, the, there's a form there to stay, to stay up to date with fast information as it launches, you'll see it there. Um, as well as some resources linked there, so that's an important one for entrepreneurs and ecosystems, like everyone that's on the call here. Um, so this call, so we, we thought it was important to launch, you know, to one of the first things we launched with FL Fast was this call here, this the innovation ecosystem call. So we are modeling this. If you've been on the SBA's version of this call at a national level, we're modeling this a little bit after that, what they do. Um, but we'll be tailoring, tailoring it to the needs here in Florida. Um, but really, you know, there's a couple of goals and what, what you want to see, what we want to see with this call. Um, and I'll say today is a little bit different. Excuse me, you'll be hearing from us a little bit more. Um, tradition, typically, you'll see, um, and I'll talk about what the calls look like. It'll be split up a little bit differently. But what we want to do here is help build relationships across Florida, not just, you know, between the corridor and everybody here, but, you know, amongst everybody that's on the call. Um, so you can see what others are doing in the state, kind of realize where the resources are here. Um, of course, because this is fast, there is an emphasis on educating and informing, <clears throat> specifically with SBIRs opportunities, solicitations, that kind of thing, sharing resources specifically for SBIRs, but um, we'll be kind of, this This call might change over time. We want to adapt specifically to the needs of the Florida ecosystem. Um, and so one thing to just, I want to highlight is we've started this process at a smaller level with SBR Catalyst. This is an award we got, we received from the SBA um, a little more than a year ago, focused on Central Florida. And so Catalyst is really a kind of Central Florida focused smaller version of this call, trying to build the network. And so we're taking lessons learned there and expanding it out. So this, there might be other things we do, but a lot of it will be kind of built around what we wanna do here, this consistent monthly um, get together of ecosystem builders around the state. So, um, so a little more specifically to what we hope this call will be, what we think it'll be, and then we'll wanna get some of your feedback too. So the goal, um, we're, we'll hold this call, you'll, you'll count on it the third Tuesday of every month. Um, at the same time, one o'clock, unless we adjust it for holidays. So <clears throat> next month, December, will be on the second Wednesday. So that's the only day just because of some of the timing of things happening. Um, but that's the only one in the next 12 months that, will, that won't be on the third Tuesday. Um, but if you're here, you should have gotten a calendar invite and be able to see that. Um, we want anybody that's a support entrepreneur support organization to, to feel welcome and to join. That's accelerators, incubators, SBDCs, universities, service providers, basically anybody that works with entrepreneurs um, that may be interested, eligible for SBIRs and, and kind of innovation resources. Um, so typically, like I said, today we're, we're uh, you're hearing a lot from the corridor team, but typically uh, this call will be, will feature guest speakers. So one to two per month. Um, these might be highlighting resources, examples of programs throughout the state or at a national level, maybe deeper dives into upcoming or solicitations that are out for entrepreneurs or for ecosystems like you, um, talking about open opportunities. So um, we want it to be a chance to connect with colleagues. So we'll try to be as engaging as we can and, and feel free to share in the chat information about your programs. We'll have an opportunity at the end of the call if you're doing something that's relevant and kind of exciting and you want to share. You know, feel free to put in chat and unmute at the end and, and share it with your colleagues here. Um, we'll be sharing all the resources, all the, the, the slides, the recordings. So we'll keep it ongoing, basically a Google Drive of everything that we share. So you can always go back to that as a resource. Um, and we'll be talking about not just SBIR, but sort of non-SBIR opportunities. So as we hear from, you know, the EDA, um, NSF, if there are other opportunities that ecosystems here might be interested in, we'll, we'll be sure to put those, um, kind of put those in front of this, the, the audience here and make sure you're aware of those. So we just wanna help build the network for everyone in the state that supports entrepreneurs. There's a lot of great work going on. We wanna make sure we're highlighting that as much as possible. So Amy, if you're able to launch the poll, um, so one thing we do wanna, we do wanna keep, and we'll, we'll do this throughout um, every month, may not be a poll, but we want you to feel comfortable and, we want to get feedback on what this call will be. So we're, we'll, we have the first couple months, excuse me, kind of planned out. But if you have, so we have some options there for 
the things that we think you want to see, but the more that, uh, so take a minute, uh, let us know what you want to see from this call. We'll, we'll be able to update it over time. Um, you can always send emails and we'll find, you know, as many ways as possible to get feedback from you. But, um, you know, the more we hear from you, the better. What, what is the most helpful for you through this call, through FAST, and through kind of the other the, the support? We really want this to, to be a, an ecosystem that kind of gets together and we learn from and, and help put resources out that, um, that connect with what you want and what you need. So it looks like a lot, but 14 of inch of the polls. So I think that's, we'll leave it up for another couple of seconds. And then, um, so I appreciate all your feedback. And again, it doesn't have to be just here. Feel free, you can email us later and um, let us know anyway to get feedback. So, all right, I think we'll end the poll now. So <clears throat> the next thing, um, so I need, I'm gonna take a drink of water, which makes sense. But one thing I do wanna share that's next up, just to build off of what we talked about for, for what I shared with SBR Catalyst. One resource we have is um, role model videos. So Catalyst focused on supporting women-owned companies approaching and going after SBIRs is really underrepresented in Florida. Um, and so we created a series of role model videos that you can share with your entrepreneurs for. It's just inspiring stories of entrepreneurs that got or received SBR funds. So I'm going to play one of those now, and then um, we'll join back in about two and a half minutes. Hi, my name is Christina Drake, and I'm the founder and CEO of Kismet Technologies. So I am a huge Trekkie. I love Star Trek. I started watching and I stumbled upon it just one day. Star Trek Next Generation was playing in syndication at 6 p.m. Uh, Central Time. And I watched it every day for six years. And I was just so just drawn to the character of the chief engineer, uh, Jordi LaForge. He was maybe the least charismatic character um, and so, but he was the one that was always saving everyone's lives just by doing his job. When I decided to go to college, I wasn't sure what to get a degree in. And so when I was thinking about what degree should I do, it was, well, Jordi LaForge did engineering. And so not having ever taken a physics class before, I signed up as an engineering major. At the start of the COVID pandemic, uh, when Orlando was under lockdown and everyone I think was on high alert and a little bit agitated, um, for me personally, my experience growing up being an asthmatic um, and being sick and in the hospital, I think made me um, hyper aware of just the ability to catch um, an illness. So I had gone to a grocery store and as I was going to get milk, actually a employee um, stepped in front of me to disinfect the door, sprayed it down, but immediately wiped it off. Um, and even though I hadn't been in the disinfectant space prior to that, I knew enough that you had to have a disinfectant on there longer than that for it to actually work. Um, so as I was driving home, um, partially because I had nothing to do once I got home because we were under lockdown, I obsessively researched disinfectants trying to understand why does it take so long to do this? You know, if we can do CRISPR um, and edit genes, why is this not a problem that's solved? So what we've created is a nanomaterial that is able to replicate what hydrogen peroxide does um, at a very small scale. And it takes water and converts that into something that can actually kill a virus or bacteria when it comes into contact with it. Once that virus or bacterial is no longer presenting as a virus or bacteria, the mechanism shuts off, and so it ends up being as gentle as water um, to a human. The SBIR funding that we pursued um, was important because when I had the idea for you know, creating something that is completely different from how we uh, currently disinfect, it was an idea in my head. Um, investors don't pay for new ideas in your head that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to just get an initial proof to see if the science even works. So the SBIR program is important because in high tech, high payoff technologies, it gives tech entrepreneurs a way to actually vet whether or not the science is real. Um, and in those places, that's where you get innovation, um, is in those really big stepwise functions and technologies. So it plays a very big role in helping um, people who are tech innovators get that initial funding to actually do the proof 
for their um, potential product. So I'm going to jump in on the next series of slides here. Uh, again, for anybody who just joined Amy Beard with the Florida High Tech Corridor team, um, just want to share a little bit about the resources that are out there for SBIR, STTR, if this is new for you. Um, so SBIR.gov is a wealth of resources, and they do their best to sort of aggregate all of the different funding opportunities that are out there for entrepreneurs. Um, if it's your first time there, they have some nice resources specific to entrepreneurs, specific to support organizations, um, and then they also try to take care of the federal agencies too. They've just undergone a whole redesign, so it's a little more friendly. I think more changes to come on that front. Um, but for example, you can get data about your ecosystem there. So you can look at the past couple of years, um, specific states, specific locations, specific agencies, and you can do some research on what's been funded before. Um, you can look at what's available today uh, for entrepreneurs. So great wealth of resources there, and we'll, we'll share some links um, to those. Jack, if you want to head to the next one. What they've also done is put together a series of comprehensive courses and tutorials. So a lot of times, you know, one of the things um, entrepreneurs kind of face when they're looking at this funding is it can be a little bit complex, right? Because you're navigating these federal agencies, there's paperwork, there's processes. And so they've developed a really nice series of, you know, just break it down for me bit by bit. What do I need to do to be able to apply for this? So if we're in between trainings or um, activities, this is a great place to point entrepreneurs, or if you yourself as a support organization wanna learn a little bit more and, um, and understand it, this would be a good place to start as well, some of these tutorials. Um, and then we're gonna move into some announcements. So part of what you'll see on this call, and I see some chatter going on in the chat from Daniel, um, you're gonna hear about announcements that on this call that affect ecosystem builders, whether that's funding opportunities at the federal level, um, or it's opportunities to engage with the kind of broader national ecosystem. So one of those opportunities is coming up on December 6th through 7th. Um, this is the SBA's 2022 Innovation Ecosystem Summit where, th where they'll be inviting, um, and I think registration's open now, anybody from the innovation or entrepreneurial ecosystem across the country that helps support um, companies or innovators is welcome to come to this event, learn, um, you know, share best practices um, and learn from other ecosystems about what they're doing and just get get ideas. So it'll be a great day of kind of knowledge sharing. They'll have a number of panels. Um, and the SBA has a big emphasis, uh, just like the corridor does on inclusion and how do we get these resources to, to underrepresented communities. So you'll see that featured there. Um, some of our teammates will be there. So join us if you want to come and, and check it out. Next slide, Jack. Um, and then a few a few more um, aspects of SBIR, STTR that I think are important, especially if you're new to it, and even if you aren't. Um, Jack mentioned there's 11 different federal agencies. So um, again, it's the federal government, lots of acronyms that you see there. Um, but the key point on this slide is really that each agency has their own timelines and deadlines throughout the year. Some of them only release funding once a year, some of them release it twice, some it's open all year long and you can apply anytime. Um, so part of the process is really helping entrepreneurs understand which agency they fit under uh, and what those application deadlines are. So you'll hear us on this call, keep you up to date on the latest opportunities that are open um, and kind of share and educate what types of entrepreneurs might be good for those different federal agencies. Um, next slide. And then just getting a little bit more specific uh, on that, uh, right now, uh, Department of Health and Human Services under NIH has their contract opportunities open. Um, so those will be due in January and April of this year. National Science Foundation has a rotating project pitch where you can apply anytime, um, but their next deadline is gonna be December 31st. Um, Department of Energy is open uh, now. 
And those letters of intent are due January 3rd with proposals due on the 21st of February. Um, Air Force direct to phase two uh, due just in a couple of days here. And then you can see the other agencies that will open um, in the next month or two. Um, NOAA, Department of Ed, Department of Defense, NASA, NIST, and DHS. So this is a great way to just keep up with what opportunities are available, what funding is out there right now. And as a reminder, uh, our next call is gonna be on Wednesday, December 15th at one o'clock. And then Paul, I'm gonna toss it over to you to close us out. Hey, thanks, uh, thanks, Amy and and Jack. Let me let me toss it back to you for a quick sec because there are there follow-ons to that. But uh, I'm also interested, and thanks for those in the chat. Um, Jack, any any final words, and then I'll and then I'll close it out for everybody. Yeah. So uh, so I guess one thing that I wanted to say is this this we wanted to leave extra room on this call for questions or comments. So if anyone feel free to unmute if you have thoughts or questions about fast or feedback, suggestions, um, you know, we, we wanted to leave extra room on this one since it's the kickoff to hear from you if there's anything that you wanted to know about or ask. And um, so I'll kind of open it up. You can raise your hand or, or unmute um, or put questions in the chat. So I see Carl, yeah, the Ecosystem Summit is a virtual event. So, and I think there, Amy, are there opportunities to, to exhibit and share more than just attend? I know you had talked to the SBA about that a bit, but. I think they have some panels, Jack. So um, they have a lot of SBA funded organizations that are coming to kind of speak and share about their ecosystems. Um, I do think it is a speaking opportunity. So uh, if you're new to it, maybe attend this year and then look for opportunities and future ones to get involved and speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, And I'll share um, in the follow up, they have all the recordings from last year's summit, which was also 100% virtual. I'll share all those um, so you can get a sense for the type of things they talk about. Um, yeah. yeah. Any, Jack? Yeah, Bob. Yeah, from Bob. Um, and, and this may be future sessions, but I'm very interested in qualifications because we mostly work with software, SaaS. And uh, I always think, oh, well, I've got to be in NASA and aerospace to, you know, qualify for this stuff. Um, have they, you know, loosened those requirements? So if I'm building a, a platform of some sort, um, can I can I seek funding or is that, you know? not qualify yeah i mean so it obviously and all that you know other other members of the team too jump in at the once i uh -huh. thoughts on this but yeah i mean i think it so the I'll, I'll, the answer tentatively is yes i think it depends on the application the type of software sure. and the right um topic fit yep. for that i think it is broader than what a lot of people think about so we have some okay. kind of really funny you know, some interesting examples of you know um you know, at one point the Navy or no, the Army asked for proposals for people to basically take um, a video game heads up displays and use it for kind of for uh, Army, you know, um, Army operations. So how to better display data using things you would use in video game kind of heads up display um, visualization. So there might be, you know, finding the right topic might make sense or just, you know, there's a pretty wide range of things they that is fundable um, and they look at innovation in a few different ways. So it may not, it might be taking an existing technology or technology with expertise in one area and kind of applying it to a new field. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that that's helpful because sometimes we just think, oh, well, we don't qualify, but I know they've, they've kind of loosened it up. And I see those agencies and I see a number of our founders could fit into one or more of those agencies. So, mm -hmm. so thanks. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Yeah, and it's also, you know, you may not, um, you know, I tend to encourage people to look <clears throat> across agencies too, even the ones you may not think about at first for topics, you know, another example. And I just like sharing examples because it helps kind of prove the point rather than me just saying it. But, you know, this is another DOD example, but they, DOD once funded a topic for dolphin probiotics. Hmm. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't have thought to go to DOD if I was making a dolphin probiotic, but it was, you know, they, I guess um, they would use dolphins in for landmine kind of marking and detection in, in bays right. in foreign areas. And so they wanted their dolphins to be healthy. So, you know, and there's examples like that across with software and things like that that we- Perfect. So, Thanks, yeah. appreciate it. So 
any other questions or thoughts, um, feedback, like I said, we'll have guest speakers on, on calls moving forward that talk about specific opportunities or examples of programs they have, but um, curious to hear thoughts there. And then, um, and if I'm not, yeah. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll ask one more. You probably know Start a Studio, we run cohorts and we'd love to have a guest speaker come in and talk to you know those groups at, at different stages. Usually, it's virtual, and it can be let's say a half hour time slot, you know, or a little bit more. Uh, but that would help a, a great deal. I mean, we can come up to speed on what's happening, but I'd love a, a Q and A that way. Uh, that that would be a huge help for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll connect after and see see what we can do there. And at the very least, you know, as we have resources and trainings and things that are virtual, we'll. We'll make sure to share them with you too. So, um, so oh, good. But yeah, there might be other things we can do. Um, and so, and I just put another kind of, I guess, the last note in the chat here. And, and yeah, thanks, Cindy. For the, there's a checklist we put together for um, through Catalyst for um, SBR, SBR eligibility for companies. But um, something we will try to do every month is if you have an event, a program, something that you want to share. Um, that you're working on for the group, feel free to put that link in the chat and we'll distribute it at the end. Or, or if you want to put a link in the chat or unmute and kind of mention something you're doing, whether it's, you know, directly SBR related or kind of tangential and related, we're happy to give you the floor to, to showcase what you're doing too. And if, we don't, if there's none of those, then I'll hand it back to Paul. Yeah, no, thanks, Jack. And and uh, I'll just comment, Maria, thanks for that question earlier in the chat about, um, and sometimes it happens where people say, well, is this a corridor thing or an Orlando? This is a Florida thing. And and we're we're blessed to be in a position to be able to, to sort of connect, collaborate, convene with this group. Um, but there's, I continue to see just amazing opportunities across Florida. So, you know, for the, if, if this call is beneficial, you know, Keep asking those questions. The resources are out there. We don't know everything, so we rely on on others that are here to be able to share those ideas and thoughts. I'm, you know, with 33 years in the Navy, this is not my world. I'm learning fast, but there's a ton of other things that I don't know. And and folks like you that are on this call from the various places in Florida, it's uh, it's great. So thank you for uh, thank you for dialing in today. Uh, Jack, thanks for leading the charge on this. For the familiar faces, it's great to see you again. For those that are uh, that I'm not familiar with, and I'm going to look up these names and find out where they are uh, in Florida. I'm excited to have you on the call. Whatever we can do uh, for you, that's that's why we're here. I'm I'm just excited beyond belief that Florida is now on the map for this resource. Uh, and be able to plow that right back in for uh, for the entrepreneurs that are here and serving the communities that you represent. I mean, to me, that's one of the most important things. So with that, um, and Jack and Amy, thanks again for, for handling the chat. Um, thank you very much. I'll, Jack, I'll leave it to you to get all the information passed out to those uh, once we uh, once we close this out and have a great uh, rest of your day. Also, as I told the corridor team this morning, have a great Thanksgiving. Um, it's that time to be very thankful for for all sorts of things. So have a have a blessed uh, Thanksgiving uh, as we get through November, and we hope to see you on the call uh, here in December. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you.